Hello and welcome along to the next in the series of videos all about uh, setting up Chocolatey for usage within uh, an organizational uh, or internal context. So in the last video we looked at getting Chocolatey installed on what I'm referring to as my workstation machine. It's the machine that has direct access to the internet, it's the machine there that I will be able to pull all the uh, necessary components down onto and then we can use to uh, look to use uh, all of those components to get everything set up on other machines. So what I'm going to look at in this video is not strictly a requirement. I mean, you won't find it on uh, any of this information. You won't find any of what I'm away to do on the uh, documentation here. But it is something that I think will be useful for the purposes of uh, this video series. And it's also uh, another uh, example of how uh, chocolate can be used in this context. So what I thought about uh, last night was that as I'm building out these machines uh, and I've got more than one of them, and I'm flipping back and forward between the workstation and the Nexus machine, uh, it might become difficult to, to keep up with uh, which machine is which. So there's a really useful tool called uh, BG Info. Uh, and what it does is it simply uh, displays information about the current machine on the desktop. It's a really simple application, um, but I want to get that uh, internalized as a package so that I can use it uh, going forward. So we already did this as part of uh, the script that we executed for downloading all those components. So really all we'll need to do is we'll need to modify this to be uh, the BG Info package. So I'm just going to delete the downloading of the chocolate extension and the other one that was there, and I am going to download and install or I'm going to download and internalize the BG info package that is available on uh, chocolate.org. So it didn't find it, oh, so the, the name must be slightly different. So let's go up here and have a look. I'm going to go up here. I thought it might be, it might have a hyphen in it. So let's, let's see if we can find it. So I'm just going to go ID info. I know it does have info in the name. Let's search for this. Uh, what does that come up with? That comes up with... Uh, right. mm, where's the package that I'm looking for? Core info. BG info, it's right there. So why did that fail? BG info, the package was not found on the sources listed. Oh, I see. Sorry. That was completely my mistake because um, I'm looking at the wrong feed. So the package is there, but um, the the source on the end here was the uh, license feed. So the package doesn't exist in the license feed. It exists on the chocolate community repository. That's completely my fault. I copied and pasted that without checking. So let's try that again. So this time around, it does find BG info and it downloads and internalizes that. So if we look at the uh, packages folder, we should now have a BG info one there. And that's the one that I want to look at getting installed. So now that I have it downloaded, uh, I can simply, I'm trying to clear the screen, but that didn't work. Let's do that again. Uh, I'm going to do choco install package called BG info. And this time around, I'm going to, I'm going to specifically state that it's in this folder. So that's in C, Choco Setup, uh, Packages. So if I do that, that's using the internalized package, not the one coming from the license feed. So this would work uh, without an internet connection. Let's go ahead and get that installed. And it's copying BG info, the zip file. It's putting things into the right place based on where they need to be for things to work. And it's created a shim gem for BG info. So because that shim gem is created, once the installation is complete, we should directly be able to run BG Info, which brings up this. Uh, so BG Info is fully configurable. You can add custom pieces of information. You can uh, show lots of pieces of information that you would want to display on your uh, desktop. So what it shows by default is all of this information. So the, the really the information that I'm really interested in, um, I, mean, I might have to tinker with it a little bit uh, so that it shows up a little bit better, but it's essentially this section here. So this is this says workstation. Um, I might want to make that text a little bit bigger, um, but 
uh, essentially what I'm trying to do is as we start to uh, roll this out and have multiple servers, uh, the Nexus server, the Jenkins server, the CCM web server, the database server, all of those servers up and running, I want to be able to uh, quickly see uh, which one we're currently on. So I'm fairly sure that uh, BG Info is uh, configurable in uh, how big the text is. So I might uh, lose some of this information that we don't necessarily need uh, and uh, instead just have the machine name and make it really big at the top. So that's pretty much all I wanted to do for this video. Um, but again, I just wanted to stress that this is re-emphasizing that point we made uh, about the organizational usage of uh, chocolate. It's all about looking at the packages that you want to use internally and using the uh, features within Chocolatey uh, for business to bring those packages internal into your organization to make them available. Because now that I have this package in, uh, available here, once we have Nexus up and running, our repository server, we can push all of those packages onto that uh, package repository and start consuming them uh, across all of the machines in our environment. So that's all I had for this video. The next video, we will start looking at uh, getting Nexus installed and getting it set up. So hopefully I see you then.